Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and I'm here to bring you today just a brief prep video if you guys are entering the Johto Classic. Of course this is a battle competition similar to the Kanto Classic but it's done through the battle spot so of course if you don't have a Pokemon Trainer Club account you cannot register uh, but you'll have to go to your Global Link account, register for this. Uh, registration is going on now through the end of the weekend of course um, and this competition is for Pokemon from one all the way up to second gen. So uh, quite a few more options, definitely a lot more threats. There is still an item clause in effect and of course a species clause. As opposed to last time though, this time it's pick six, bring three, and it will not level up your old Pokemon, it'll only level uh, Pokemon above level 50 down. Um, and there are no mega stones still, so you can have whatever items as long as there's no mega stones or soul do or anything weird like that. Um, the I just kind of wanted to use this as a a chance to go over a lot of the threats here. Um, I just, I also pulled up a brief overview of the uh, the rules just in case you guys were curious. The um, I was trying to find the specific. I think they changed the timer for this battle too. Couldn't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, I really like these formats. They are very, very interesting. No Mega Pokemon on top of um, on top of just a very, very selective list of Pokemon you can bring. Pretty interesting. Also, if you're interested, you get Whitney's Mill Tank for entering. How cool is that? You get to have the Pokemon that kicked your butt back in uh, early 2000. So, um, and don't lie, I know that that Pokemon kicked your butt the first time you went up against it. Uh, if you're interested though, that Pokemon is going to have the Scrappy ability, which is pretty nice. With Rollout of Track Stomp and Milk Drink, very, very, very annoying moveset overall. Now, threats for this competition. If you haven't, definitely consider watching the uh, Kanto Division. When I made that threat list up, all those threats are still going to be present here. Of course, this does change a few things overall because now we have access to more fairy types such as Azumarill and we also have access to Steel and Dark which were not in the first competition besides Magnezone, I'm sorry Magneton at all. So uh, definitely changes of things to watch out for. I'm just going to briefly go over some threats to look out for in each of the, uh, I'm on Smogon's page right now and um, definitely going to be on the lookout for Banded or Dragon Dance Dragonite. Uh, I actually even ran into a, a few really, really bulky, either um, specialty offensive ones or ones using Thunder Wave and Dragon Dance. Uh, they do often carry Iron Tail or Iron, he or Iron Head as coverage against fairies. Azumarill, of course, can run a variety of sets. Probably Belly Drum or Bandit are going to be the most common because it can still hold the items that it needs. You may run into some Assault Vest variants, uh, some of the things that threaten Azumarill don't really like dealing with Assault Fest or Sap Sipper, so keep that in mind, especially if it looks like they don't have any Grass Answers on their team. I really like how much a Venusaur shines in this competition because of the prevalence of a few more Fairy types. Venusaur basically walls the uh, a lot of them. Um, Venusaur is threatened pretty hard if, they, if something like Azumarill gets to plus 6, but even then he can take a hit, uh, and if Azumarill's at plus 6, max speed, Venusaur still outspeeds it. So uh, Venusaur can, of course, run very bulky Elite Seed sets. You're going to see it with Sludge Bomb and Grass Move. Maybe a Hidden Power, Fire, or Rock here and there just because of how prevalent those threats are. Uh, it can also run physical sets, and it can set up its own Sun or utilize Sun from Ninetales. So definitely be on the lookout for that. You can use items, so Eviolite is going to be at play here for sure on things like Palaswine and Chansey very very annoying because they can take hits a lot better than you might otherwise think. Um, some of the main threats that immediately leap to my mind are either Specs or Assault Vest Raikou. Uh, you might see Life Orb because of the, the damage output. Really really hard to pass up. But Assault Vest just takes hits really nicely because of course it only has a single weakness. And please 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 bring a counter for Suicune to this competition. Suicune can run the very very usual Crocoon sets. Um, where it's just going to have mono type attacking, uh, probably not a good idea now that there's a few more Pokemon with Water Orb around. But uh, since it's bring six, pick pick three, you can probably gauge if you want to do that or not. But Calm Mind, Sleep Talk, Rest, Scald, 
Or what I think you'll probably see more common, which was discussed in the sop, the smog on thread here, sheer cold. Even if we can only manage to hit one of your Pokemon with sheer cold, that means it's done its job. It's probably removed something pretty important. Uh, and of course, if you happen to bring him a champ against a Suicune and it's fastening you, it will always hit its sheer cold. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, something like a Magneton shuts down Suicune pretty well because of sturdy and then of course super effective electric attacks. Those are both rather nice. Uh, Clefable, Zapdos, Gengar, and Machamp, they all pose just as big a threat as they did last time. I think Machamp is a little bit less uh, threatening just because of um, Suicune and Azumarill. Uh, Zapdos is really, really nice though because it does threaten Suicune. It can outspeed it. It can phase it out if it has Whirlwind. Some some very nice options there. Banditente is going to be very, very popular too. I could see it trying to run some type of calm mindset with some special coverage, but generally people are just going to spam Secret Fire and Extreme Speed with it. So definitely have a physical switch in for that. Um, that's where Suicune can come in very nicely too. Uh, you don't see the other legendary birds up here at the top for good reason. There won't be as much switching as in the 6v6 competition just because it's only 3v3. Most people are just going to go hyper offensive. And so Articuno and Moltres lose a lot of their viability with that happening. Um, like I said, Magneton is a great answer to some of these checks up at the top here. Uh, even uh, Azumarill can't really one hit KO Magneton, especially if it has Sturdy. Uh, Snorlax is just as annoying bef as before, similar to, to Chansey, Clefable, and Blissey. We have to add Blissey to that threat list now. Uh, I do like Quagsire as kind of a tech counter to something like Suicune. If you run Water Absorb, Suicune probably can't hit you if, unless it's running the sheer cold. And uh, if it's a Crocoon, uh, unaware Quagsire doesn't really care about it. Um, Quagsire also handles things like Raikou and Zapdos pretty well. Just run a little bit of either Rock or Ice coverage or Ground ground Stab, Earthquake, or Earth Power, and you're good to go. Uh, Caesar, I don't know how much detail I need to go into on Caesar just because of how popular he is and his viability is between banded life orb swords dance even agility baton pass uh substitute swords dance he can do a lot so i would expect to see caesar caesar does need to run some type of fighting coverage to get out of being trapped by something like magneton uh, or just a speedy caesar and of course he can u-turn which might be annoying too things in this little b plus tier here are kind of where i'm going to leave it because uh, after that, I think that the threats get a little bit more obvious. But all these, except for Feraligator, Crobat, and Tyranitar, were in the previous uh, threat list for the Kanto competition. Arcanine can run offensive or defensive sets and be pretty effective. There aren't that many fire types that are effective in this type of competition. So I would expect to see Arcanine, especially with more fairies being around. Uh, Alakazam is very nice to splash onto basically any team. I do expect it to see a little bit more focus sashes here just because that's just such a nice fail safe overall. Uh, Kangaskhan is nice because it, it retains the bulk even though it's not mega. It's one of the few pretty viable users of fake out which is very nice and uh, Kangaskhan just gets a lot of really nice physical coverage so definitely something to be on the lookout for there. Gyarados, when I battled in the Kanto Cup, I saw a lot more defensive Gyarados than I saw offensive ones, but it can very easily set up a Dragon Dance, whether it's an offensive or defensive set. Uh, I actually ran into quite a few Thunder Waving ones and then trying to, to shuffle the team around and get things paralyzed, like good old Gen 2 days. So keep an eye out for Gyarados trying to do those types of annoying shenanigans. Um, that quad week to electric, kind of easy to take advantage of though. Uh, Feraligator, Crobat, and Tyranitar bring some pretty interesting dual threats here, just on the either if you want to go speedy with Dragon Dance Feraligator or Dragon Dance Tyranitar. Banded Crobat is a great answer to so many different things, whether it's a zoom roll, uh, it's going to outspeed things like Alakazam, uh, force opponents into their priority options such as Arcanine or Dragonite, and Crobat can definitely take a hit, so forcing your opponent into those options is not bad at all. Uh, there aren't that many fake out users, but Crobat is nice to dodge that flinching chance with inner focus. Uh, Tyranitar, you might see not only on the um, the uh, the Dragon Dance front, 
but it's much more likely that you will probably see it on a more bulky front just because of how nice that bulk is under Sandstorm. And actually giving something like Sand Slash Sand Rush, I actually consider using that myself. Uh, so there aren't only your only options for setting weather now are Tyranitar, Politoed, and Ninetales. So um, definitely have answers to each of those different types of weather. I think that there aren't as many good Swift Swimmers because basically you're looking at something like uh, Omastar, maybe Kabutops, uh, Polyrath. And so I think you're much more likely to see Sand Slash because he can take a hit and he actually hits pretty hard. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. If you guys have any tips or teams that you've seen in team building, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I have not decided at all what I'm going to bring on this yet. I actually did this video on a little bit of a whim. Uh, I'll leave the link to the smog on thread in the description as well in case you want to go check out what other people are talking about as far as threats. And of course there is an actual live ladder on smog on right now too in case you want to try out some teams. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, let me know what I can do to make it more useful. And in the future, I will definitely incorporate that. Thanks for your time. Hope you have a fantastic day. Bye now.